Can That's a bit start recording from now? Yeah, you can start recording. I, I even forgot to record my whole session. So thank you very much for those of we'll you who start. are recording. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so now uh, if we actually look at the next part, which is like, there are so many roles, okay? Make sure that they know each roles and how they run, okay? This is only a sample template. I actually make it smaller, but this is actually like all the roles that we had in our agenda. Uh, to make it bigger, like this is like Sergeant at Arms. Uh, present, what does the present does, the Toastmaster of the day, our counter, body language monitor, chat monitor. There's so much roles. Let them know what each role does. Like it may be the same, it may be the same as your club itself, but when you have an online club that actually add additional elements, you want to know them beforehand. Otherwise, you'll be like confused. You do not know what the each role represents and voila, someone actually give you a role called body language monitor. What do you do then? Do you evaluate the body or do you evaluate the face? Or do you evaluate the, the, uh, the things that they show on webcam or anything that is actually at the background, such as my olive, for example, okay? So there are different things that maybe like, because of lack of clarity, they may not know exactly how it goes, okay? Now, also try to give them 15 minutes to 20 minutes. Tell them early, come by early so that you can mingle with us. Imagine that you go to a club meeting and someone say, hi, how are you doing? And then let's join for fun. Let me get to know about you. Get that bonding ongoing. Also test their equipments because the microphones and the webcams are the two toughest stuff that you need to handle online. Even in contests, you have to think about, you have to have a valid, uh, you have to have a working webcam that shows you and also your audio that is very clear for everyone to see. Okay, you have to have a place whereby you can demonstrate your gesture somehow. Uh, maybe that will actually involve a lot of people. Now let them test the equipment. Also ask where they are from, bond with them. Okay, bonding is the key, okay? And some people actually did something before our meeting starts. So remember the music? You can actually play some music to warm everyone up. Keep them occupied. Keep them feeling relaxed and maybe enjoying the whole session. Okay, everyone clear so far? This is the only basic stuff. You can give me a thumbs up if you're following. I'm actually looking. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, this is what I will do additionally. I will actually have something called the body system because the difference between an online and an in-person, which is basically community clubs and stuff like that, is that in person, you can actually talk with that person by walking to there, right? Like I notice a person that's being left behind and I walk towards him and say, hey, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Aaron. I'm the VP of, of this club. You feel much more welcome. Now, online clubs, because of a lack of interaction, you have to be slightly more proactive. I usually use something called the body system. What do I mean by body system? Is that I will assign one or two members, like only maybe one member just for example, one member to talk with a guest that is totally new to Toastmasters, that's totally new to here. Or maybe a, a guest from elsewhere who is also a Toastmaster. Let them follow through. Having that pair up makes it closer, makes the bond closer. Or if you think that you are lacking in manpower, don't worry, you can one to five. At least you're caring about five different people in case they have any questions they will ask you directly. Like they will ask you simple questions like this. This is the three common questions they will ask online. The guests, okay? One, can I have the agenda please? Common, common to everyone. I need to know the agenda. I want to know the flow, right? <laughs> yes, so the second one that they will ask is that, um, uh, is the meeting starting now? Because they will not know when the meeting actually starts. Some people will just like wait for like five to 10 minutes or even like wait for half an, hour, half an hour and the host is not there. You know, they want to know everything that's clearing their thoughts up. Okay, and then the third common question that the online guests will ask uh, is that, uh, uh, is there any emails or follow-ups that I can contact? Like if I want to join the club, Okay, this is whereby the VPM steps in, okay? I want to know about how to join the club. So send me some emails and stuff like that. You know? Follow up with me. I want to care about this club. So those are the three common questions that usually they will usually do. Now, always lead them well. So if you actually think about all these questions, it's easily, it's easily solved if you think about the solutions. Now, this is the part whereby I'm going to give a now and refine. Now is basically what we are doing now. Go to like online meetings right now. There are lots of online meetings around the world right now. 
Now, this is the now part. I want to give you the idea for refining. This is within that context. I haven't talked about ideas yet. I'm only talking about how do you refine better. Now, we talk about the common rules. Let's divide by common rules. Toastmaster of the day. So can anyone tell me what is the most important role uh, or responsibility that the Toastmaster of the day will do? Actually type in the chat box and then we can actually see the interaction there. Oh, okay. Don't worry, there's no right or wrong answers. Don't, don't worry, I won't, I won't bite you because I'm too far away. I'm in front of my webcam, right? Like host a meeting to a guy. Yes, these are the elements. You, you bring the vibe, you lead them. You want to create this exciting elements whereby you being the host, very cheerful, and then you make the guests laugh and enjoy the whole session. Would you want that? You want to make a lasting impression that this meeting is led by a very good host. I enjoy my time. I want to come back for more. This is what we do for online. Even in in-person meetings, that's what we do. Now, this is the common thing that we, some people do online now. I can assure you that out of 100 clubs, there will be like 90 clubs that's doing this. Like they would just say, uh, welcome to, uh, 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 let me think about a club. Uh, Welcome to ABC Club. Uh, my name is Aaron. I'm your host for today. Um, today's agenda would be like one, two, three, four, five. Would you want to stay in my club then? Just like from what I'm going to say, like this is super boring. Like everyone is going to stand up the same thing, like introducing the same stuff. Like what is the exciting element that you can do better than just telling us about the standard procedure? We've seen too much of this. Now we want to refine and make it better. How do we do that? We do not want boring, like a uh, boring introduction. We want to have very nice, impressive, unique. That is your club feature. Okay. These are my suggestions, though. If you want to jot it down, it's actually really helpful. So one of the things that I would do definitely is to do a warm up. Okay. To to be a good host, you need to build that interaction. So let's say, for example, right now I'm going to stop chair, and ask everyone to raise up your hands. Okay, raise up your hands and keep on shaking so that we show support. Now everyone open up your webcam so that we take the next step of having a photo shot. So can anyone for, for the time being help me to do a print screen so that we can actually capture every lovely faces online. Anyone can help me do that? I can't do it with my two hands up. <laughs> Just do a print, uh, uh, print screen and then basically it works. So now this is the first part whereby the host would do. Okay, this is not the standard whereby you, you see the holes, even in clubs, they were just like, oh, welcome to our meeting. I appreciate your time for coming by. Okay, come on. I, I, we are used to that. Now, if you actually do this wave and take a picture, screenshots, or even like having fun or asking questions, like help people next to you, which basically you have no one, help them to give a light massage. You see what I'm doing right now, right? You actually, you have different people on the screen, right? Help them to give the light massage or even say hi to them. Hi. And you can do this kind of interactiveness. Think about it. This is only just one idea. I'm just giving you lots of ideas later on, okay? Now also, like what I did is I, I do a warm up waving and photo shooting. You have to make as interactive as possible. Ask questions like, uh, we have a moments of truth or we have the guest introduction. Now tell us something so special that you will blow us away in our online meetings. So, be more interactive, give them their spotlight too. And also, you can actually do it in a very professional manner, saying that, welcome to the online meeting. My name is Aaron, I'm your host for today. A couple of house rules that we always care. The first house rule is that we want to make sure that we want to show our support for our speakers. So everyone can hold their hands, wave it, and show support every time we have a speaker coming up. Is that easily done? So basically like ask questions and stuff. You can show the professionalism by giving your energy out as well. Although there's no one around, or maybe your mom or your sister saying that, what is Aaron doing? So that will be a situation whereby you have to overcome somehow, okay? Not just this, uh, we also have something like, the most important thing in a Toastmaster of the day online is to always create a vibe. Always create fun vibe, whereby they are always enjoying. Look at all these smiley faces. This is what I hope at the very least in my workshop that you can have fun with us. Right? I'm not going to make it like, oh, this is a very boring tutorial. Welcome to listen to Aaron's speech. No, come on. This is, this is way over that. 
we want to make sure that we are having some fun elements. We can actually bring our kids as well. We also can bring different people, like friends, joining the webcam and having fun conversations. Get involved. Bring that vibe. Share it. And you will have an excellent Toastmaster meeting for the start. Everyone follow so far? You can give me a thumbs up. Thank you. I noticed that people are dropping, so I hope that I'm not chasing people away. <laughs> now, next thing that we do online is that we think about timers. So now timers, some people are standardized, will definitely hold up a green, yellow, and red card in front of the camera, right? Tell me if you are doing that. Raise up your hand. <laughs> if you're using a very standard Toastmaster way, you hold up a green, yellow, and red. Online, okay? You, some people don't even know how to do the green, yellow, and red. Let me, let me just show a demonstration. Okay, this is red, okay? This is red, right? Okay, I'm going to switch off my webcam. Oh, no, switch off my sharing. This is red, right? Some people are actually doing this. Can you see red? You cannot, right? Literally, you have to give a distance, for goodness sake, right? You have, have the situation whereby you have to make sure that it's visible. Like what Richelle is doing right now, having a nice, nice virtual background, if you, if you don't mind me spotlighting you for a bit, that this is like... Thank you, don't worry. We love to feature you online, okay? So we, we have this one. So, but the thing is, there's a downside. Rochelle, can you actually move around? Move your head or move your hands and stuff like that. Hold up your hands in a virtual background. You can see that it's actually like, he, she becomes a bit hollowish, right? Like, look at Millie. Uh, this is a really good example of what we call the holo effect. The holo online, the be the ghost, we accompany you. So this is what happens if it fails. This is called fate, like, a fair fight for one. So we see one successful one, which is uh, Letty. So basically we have, this is actually okay. We, we call that acceptable. But this is what we do for online uh, uh, timing. Not just this, we also share something else such as this. We refine it, not just showing the color cards, but we will refine it with a different element. This is called, the, we, when we do the uh, lightings, right? We actually learn to also support the timer by spotlighting her. Because the spotlighting actually focus on the timer so that the spot timer will pop up in front of your screen when you are a speaker. And then when you're speaking and you suddenly see, oh, green, I can continue and keep track. Just like what an um, in-person club meeting would be. Okay, it's just like exactly the timer raising up the card, exactly that, same effect, okay? Now, we also learn how to pin. From a speaker perspective, learn how to pin. The speak, uh, learn how to pin the timer. So let me ask every one of you, anyone knows how to pin a video? Okay, I'm actually looking at people who don't, okay? Okay, so for those of you who don't, now for those of you who knows, uh, for those of you who know, please type in the chat box of teaching how people pin on the video so that we can actually see whether you are a good teacher or not. So for, for me, my perspective is very simple. Uh, find a lovely picture that you see on the screen. For those of you who do not know, okay? For those of you who are using the laptop version, okay, look, that's the difference, laptop and mobile. Laptop first. So laptop, laptop is that you find your mouse cruiser, find any lovely picture that you want to, like you want to focus on Sarah, you want to focus on Angela, for example. Okay, I will put my mouse cruiser on that screen and you'll notice that on the top right hand corner, there are three little dots, right? Now click on the three little dots. And that should be a button for every one of you. Every, I mean everyone. That should be a button called pin video. Now I'm gonna unspotlight myself uh, so that you can, you can actually do something called the pin video button. Now do you see a pin video button, right? I see Sherilyn actually nods. If you see the pin video, that's usually what the speaker will do. I will find my timer, okay, find my timer, and then pin the timer. That's the usual practice for a speaker online so that we can keep track of it. Not just looking at the gallery view, but we can focus on all oh, the timer is there, I can pin it. Everyone clear so far on this one on why they have to pin? Because they can make sure that the timer is well visible on the screen. But then we also do something called the spotlight, which is like, for example, I want to find someone that I want to spotlight on. Oh, no, I want to spotlight uh, Joanne, if you want to be on the screen. <laughs> so I like to spotlight Joanne but her, her network is a bit, yeah, so we want to spotlight on her. So imagine that she's a timer and I'm going to spotlight her. That will actually show uh, that timer card on the screen. And then after when she has finished, uh, 
holding like five seconds or so, I'll continue spotlighting myself. And we repeat the process from yellow for her. And then after which I will spotlight myself after five seconds for myself. So everyone clear so far in that part on why we have to spotlight the timer so that everyone in this room can see the timer. This, this is what the host can support. This is only just two examples. Obviously we have more. Now, what happens if I want to do a virtual background or like we have just demonstrated and virtual webcam? Uh, virtual webcam are something different. Um, usually this is something that I like to do. For those of you who have been to my workshop, you will definitely see what I would usually do, but not a black screen though. This is actually not a poor example, not a good example. So for me, I need to set up something called, for me, I use something called the Sparkle Cam. Uh, some people will use many cams. These are the two tools that we use. And we will try to make ourselves as creative, as personalized as possible. For those of you who attend the contestant tips, this is what I usually do. Uh, contestant tips wise, this is what I will usually do. And I will demonstrate it, voila. Can you see me in the screen right now? Yeah. So this is whereby we personalize and make it more fun. But imagine that it's not just me but every single one having their own graphics, own pictures, like someone will be in Hawaii, someone will be in France. Like having this personalization makes you stand out and also make everyone feel, wow. Okay, so just like you are the real cool person out there. Okay, I'm just doing a demonstration. This is what we usually do. Now for, for me, I will have a question though. What happens if I'm not that tacky? I, I don't know how to use virtual background. It's just really bad. Uh, I, I don't know how to uh, use a virtual webcam. This is so complicated for me. So what can I do for timer then? How do I refine it better? So this is usually, this is just a sample of what I do. You can see that this is actually Sparkle Cam. So you can see this whereby I can even make, for example, I can even make a lion. See this? See me? You can see that lion there. But this is just only for, for people who want to know the background. But now, if you want to refine it better, uh, what we do, uh, for those of you who are not too tacky and set, we actually clap our hands. Very clear, right? Five minutes, I will clap, clap once. Seven, six minutes, I will clap twice. And then seven minutes, clap three times. And after which, after overtime, simple to follow. Everyone clear on that part? why we have to clap until that person goes down. Only the timer will do that. So that's what we do for clapping hands. Same thing with ringing a bell, just ring once, twice, three times. This is actually for those who do not want to do the standard way of, I don't have my green, yellow, and red, so I will do this. Now there's also another element of sharing screen. Uh, sharing screen uh, with a PowerPoint with green, yellow, and red, that's actually really okay. The downside of sharing screen when you do a timer is that what happens if you, the timer, get disconnected. This is actually what will happen. Your screen will be frozen. Your share screen will be frozen, I repeat. And everyone has to see your share screen for the next 10 to, no, I wouldn't say next 10 seconds, uh, next 30 seconds to 60 seconds. And they cannot do anything about it, except the Zoom host, which will be actually overcoming that factor. Now, this is one risky point for those of you who are sharing screen, but also kind of okay for, for new members, just click on the share screen button and you have it. Now there's also something called the chat button. Now uh, you will see uh, for those of you who are using phone version. Okay. For, oh yeah. I forgot to mention about what, well, how to pin the video for mobile, right? I just mentioned about pin the video from a, a laptop for a pin the mobile. I actually do a very nice interface, hold your phone, find a picture, find a screen. If you like that person, tap, tap that person gently. If you do not like the person, type the person harshly twice, and that will be pinned. Simple to follow for mobile versions. Okay. Now, uh, this is usually the joke I would say. If you li don't like it, yeah, I just press you because you're the timer. But yeah. Now, for next thing is that the, uh, the elements whereby uh, we talk about timing is that we have this thing called, can anyone see the chat right now? This is what I would do if they are sharing the PowerPoint slides. If they are sharing the PowerPoint slides, I have to repeat. If they're sharing the PowerPoint slides, this green, yellow, and red will be helpful to, to signal the time. 
Okay, we have to care about people who are sharing the screen cannot see the timer. Okay, they will not see the timer. You you understand where I'm coming from, right? For those of you who actually shared the screen before, you will notice that oh my timer is gone. How am I supposed to see the timer? <laughs> so this is like green, yellow, red that will help you to solve that slight problem. Or if you think that that is not you, that's not the best solution. Clap once, twice, and three times. Clear, right? That will help people to gauge the time. So don't use the standard way of green, yellow, red. Think about the ways that refine it to make a better experience for online members. Clear so far? Okay. Thank you for 60, 64 people that's still surviving in this room. <laughs> no, I usually joke about this. Okay, next. Now, next thing for people will be like table topics now. So you will see that people who are table topic master, they always ask like, I have five questions. Anyone raise their hands? Uh, ask the questions. And in, in online, we, we don't just raise hands because some of us will switch off our webcam. So how do they actually raise hands, right? So Lati actually actually did a one really good example just now. He used something, the, the robotic type of blue raising up their hands. So that's actually one way that we do to raise hands. But then as a table topic master, we can't always ask them to like raise up your hands because we do not know whether they're actually raising up or not. Okay, that will be a network delay. Okay, that will be definitely network delays. Like we notice one that's raising up their hands and two is like, that person has actually raised their hands but it's lagging out your computer. Okay, so there'll be a network delay. How can you be fair? Uh, what about the people who are in the chat box that says, I want to answer the question. How do you call them? So this is what I would do as a table topic master. Uh, is that I need to find a way that is my priority. This is my tip. This is still the now part. My tips for a table topic. Is that I'll pick with high priority with those people who switch out the webcams. Now, let me ask you this question. Why do I have to, why do I pick the people who are on the webcams first? Now, leave in the chat box and let us know why you think that way. I will pick the people on the webcam first. Oh, Sarah actually did answer the main point. Because the webcam, it shows whether you are there. Simple answer. If you are picking the people who are on the webcam, high chances that they will listen and then they answer it. If you're picking a blank screen, for example, or would you guarantee that person will answer it? Oh, maybe that person's AFK away from keyboard or maybe eating lunch or dinner. You do not want that situation to embarrass yourself or one minute silence. You want to make sure that those people you're going to answer this question will be there to answer. Now, after those people who are on the webcam, now the second priority is those people who actually type in the chat box. Now, let me ask you again, why would I pick the second priority as those people in the chat box? Nope, haven't yet. So for me, uh, why, uh, for those of you who are still thinking, I will review slight answers, is that when we pick the people who are on the keyboard side, that's uh, no, not on the keyboard, on the chat box, is that what I would say is that uh, for those of you who are uh, planning to answer, answer the question, these are the two methods. One, you actually open your webcam and raise up your hand. We'll actually pick the people who raise up your hands. If we haven't picked anyone that's from there, then we'll pick the people who actually type in the question in the chat box saying, Number one, one for question one, two for question two, three for question three. Everyone clear so far on that part? If you actually type one, type two, type three, it shows you're there. That is actually how I prioritize the table topics to make sure that people will answer the questions and that will be a smooth transition. Okay, so this is only just for now. Now I want everyone to think about what can be done better or refine it as a table topic master. Think about all these different ideas. This is just only a sample of the ideas, what I would do as a form of refining. First of all, think about interaction. We are lacking interaction online, right? So let them buddy up. Let them have a role playing online. One, actually look at someone else's webcam and try to guess what it is. Or maybe one speak, one actually answer the question, and the other person acts. You see how it goes. So I will actually spotlight the person who's acting. And the person was speaking will actually say their own stories and the person who was acting will listen to the story and act up. Online is possible too. 
the other option that we'll actually do for role playing on even on like, table topics is that they must use a specific word. So let's say for let's say for example, uh, I will ask them to use this word saying uh, princess or even like um, uh, Cinderella. Then they will have to use in their table topic speech on that wording. So this is like the way that you play around with table topics, add more challenge, add more fun in there. Now online, you actually can do something even more effective than just in person is to change storytelling. Now you can actually pick the people along the side of the boxes, right? So now let's say, for example, that I can see every one of you here who is on, on the webcam. So I will actually answer the question first and I answer it and when I finish it, I'll say, I have a choice to pick someone. I would like to throw the ball to Sarah to continue on my story. And then Sarah continues and then make it sure. Now you see that getting the audience interaction and involvement is better than leading them too much. Let them feel more involved. That's overcoming the interactiveness on an online perspective. Now, okay of that part so far? Thank you. Give me a thumbs up always if you, if you think this is a good point. If you think that's brilliant, I would like to give my watch away. So that's how I indicate good and okay and poor. No, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> okay, just doing an example. And we also have something called the item box. Now, item box is like, um, uh, I will actually open like, this is an example. This is, this is actually not a really good one, but uh, just imagine that this tissue paper has something else. Okay, so I will actually take out in the box and then pick anything item out and then you have to talk about it for two minutes. Right, you can actually do the item box challenge. Uh, this is what we do for online uh, meetings. It's also proper for community clubs. You can actually think about it. Now, all these ideas are easily extracted if you think, right? You, you think that this is like, it's easy. Everyone knows it, but then how can I not think about it? Now, if you keep on using it, keep on practicing it, that's becoming your part of the agenda. Now, these are all my experiences I've experienced for the past 13 years. I've tried a lot of crazy things that basically is my Toastmaster experience. I can share with you and you can take any one that you like, okay? The wordings, anything that you like. Do not take my word for it, okay? You can think about any ideas that works for your club. Okay, so far on that part? So we do not restrict you and say, you have to choose what I'm saying, don't. You can think about anything that works. Thank you. So I'll just continue on that part. Now this is only for table topics. Now for online evaluators, like, no, this is actually a speaker. I think some people would know who this person is. Uh, this is David Carl from uh, Online Presenters, and he has been an amazing presenter. Uh, he even found the, uh, the Toastmasters, for example. Now, now, as a speaker, now, do you really need to sit down? Let me ask you a question. Type on the chat box. Do you really need to sit down to talk about it? To do your speech? Now, he has been doing that for a long time, sitting down. And he has been playing for online for more than more than I can count the years, but he still sit down. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that that's a professional way. Okay, I'm not highlighting. I'm not criticizing you, David, but I'm just saying that you can do better <laughs> as a speaker. Okay, I know you for a long time already. Um, so this is what I would do if I want to refine better. Stand up. If you want to stand up, stand up. If you don't want to stand up, then you make sure that you are pretty visible or have a nice camera that shows the lightings on your face. Don't appear like charcoal. If you are having a situation like this, I'm gonna do a little demonstration of what I mean by that. Now, everyone can see that I'm actually having a very poor lighting right now. It's very blurry, right? This is actually a poor camera. So I will find, where is my phone when I need it? Okay, uh, imagine that, it, oh, there is a phone, thank you. So this is a very poor, you can see that this part, no, this part on my face is dark, right? So what I do, this is what I do. Um, in the past when I, uh, uh, I pretty don't care about online is that I will switch on the torch light, see this? This is called overexposure, okay? Do not do this, this is crazy. Move a bit away, see, see this? This is called overexposure. Now, do you feel that you can see my face better now? 
This is one way that we speakers have to care about our image online. Okay, this is for everyone have a phone, right? Please say you do. If you don't, uh, I'll find some sponsors to find you a phone. Uh, maybe a recycle phone and maybe that will be helpful for everyone. But a phone will definitely get you some way to solve some problems, okay? Even your phone will be very helpful when your network breaks and you will have your mobile phone that connects with you, right? That is a backup plan. Now I'll go back to uh, where my money spent. <laughs> it's my bit, better webcam. <laughs> is whereby a webcam makes a difference in that part. Now, as a speaker, you can stand up, you can actually do like notes of different things in mind. Uh, you can grab a friend if you have your sister, siblings, and anyone who you can prank on, bring them into a show, your show, your camera show, and then talk and then have a speech. But you can actually bring the props there. You can even bring, like I always do show play with my olive. Anyone love this olive? For those of you who know olive, you will feel that there's a connection, right? For those of you who haven't seen this movie, you will feel that what's this snowy thing. So it will actually be a nice, like, you know, those kind of like self-talk. Like, how are you doing today? Are you finding okay? How's my workshop? Oh, you hate it. Okay. So, so that's how we do that interactive self-improvised methodology. Okay. So bring a talk, bring a prop, help yourself, wear a hat. You can, you can personalize yourself, right? You don't need to just sit down there and do speeches. Make it even better. Refine it, okay? Or you can use a new gadget. Like you can use a new new webcam or like new new props for visualization effect. It's up to you. Online has more options than that. You can't bring your whole 3D model or a 3D model into a real life speech, right? But you can do it online. You can actually have virtual backgrounds, just like what I did. I put a lion there just now. I put, I put myself in the wallpaper. These are some example effects that it can actually help you to heighten your speaking, uh, uh, or I was saying your methods to actually speak online. Now you can actually make yourself look very cool, like being in the background, very nice, as if you are there, but you're not. Let us have the vibe. The more vibe, the interaction, remember the interaction part? You need to have that interaction. Have that part and then add this element into play. Make your online meeting interesting with this. Now, evaluators are very standard, uh, being a list, good listener, etc. But in online evaluation, you can do something better. Now, we, what happens when we do evaluation in person is that uh, free, power, free, free, nice points, a nice summary, uh, free improvement points. Full stop. Okay, so what I would do uh, if I have to be better evaluator is that I can do something called the show and tell. What do you mean show and tell? Use the examples that the, the speaker has done and do the same impression and heighten it. This is called the show and tell. Or you can do a screenshot, just like what we do. Screenshot any parts that the speaker is talking about. And then after which capture it and show it back to them. Do a PowerPoint slide on the spot, click the print screen, and then copy and paste, and show which part that person can improve on. This is what we do to make it even more professional. I can take snapshots of people who are going on online speeches, and then after which I highlight the part that you could have done better at this part, whereby you're actually showing your mouth, mouth and smiling. You can smile better. Well, I wouldn't say smile better, is that you can actually be much more relaxed and enjoy the show. You, you will show show it out. You can list it out with your screenshot with evidence. Okay. Now also uh, like also make an action plan on, online. You can actually like this is my ingredient plan for you. Like first of all, every day do a two minutes rehearsal in front of a camera or in front of a mirror saying that you are handsome, you are pretty, and then after which build your self confidence from that. The action plan. Remember the nutrition plan. Uh, if you go to a diet uh, uh, nutritionist, they will set you a diet, right, of what you need to follow. Now, same thing, action plan for them. This is the daily exercise that you can do. You can do online using that method. Plan it out, customize it, make it even more interactive. And remember in online evaluation, there are lagginess. What do you mean by lagginess? Meaning that if you speak too fast, then if the bandwidth is not that good, 
if the computer is very slow, they will not be able to pick all your words. So as an evaluator in online, it's even more critical for you to become as simple as possible when you convey. Use simple words that's easily understood and can be understand within like five to six little wordings per sentence. So these are some recommendations that if you want to give a simplicity, people can at least can catch the words. Okay, catch the words before you, you get disconnected or you get lagged out. They want to hear the clarity part. Everyone follow so far? You can give me a thumbs up if you do. Thank you. Now, phase three. We have talked about phase number one, two, and now three. Now, three part is that whereby we can add interesting elements. This is whereby everyone will have their brain juice on. Uh, these are all my recommendations or my examples of how you can make each row interesting. So now, you have a light bulb. This is you, okay? This is actually you that with a light bulb. You can have all, all these different ideas and stuff. Now, you can also ask a lot of different use. What do you mean by a lot of different use? Meaning that you can ask different people for ideas. Not just me. You might have a better idea than I do and share it. Keep on creating that vibe whereby everyone is sharing these different ideas and make it very cool. Now, this is my slogan for, for online uh, meetings when I say, is that we refine to define our clarity, our define the purpose, our redefine our vision. So we refine our techniques to set a new definition that, oh, now my meetings are interesting. Now, after refining, do you think that it's better than before, the now and now and uh, refine. Which one is better, the now part or the refine part? You you will be the judge for that. Actually, you can actually type in the chat box if you want to call, have an interactive session. <laughs> so yes, so we refined. So we refined, and then we can set a new definition. So now this is all the ideas whereby everyone can use for ref example. Are you ready for rolls? If you do, raise up your hand and give a wave and you can see a lot of different ideas. Uh, this is called the interaction with a group of no one in front of me, but everyone online. First of all, uh, one role that you might want to consider in adding to your whole agenda would be the body language monitor. The body language monitor actually features not just how cool that person is or sitting down, but on how they can be better. Like camera settings, are they positioned well in front of the screen? Uh, uh, are there like better positioning is are they no this is our common examples I'm gonna do live of the common issues that we do face online some people are doing this they actually do not know where the webcam is and they keep on looking down which is showing a lot of different nice little faces and then I'm like oh I'm talking to you guys but the thing is I like the high connection with you right now okay now everyone can actually do like five seconds Look at the webcam and build that bond. Build a friend out of it. Get used to it. And then how you convey, okay? So when you do presentation by just looking at that camera, this camera is your eye contact with the world. Just like what I'm doing right now. I'm actually looking at everyone around the world. But now I'm looking at the screen. I'm seeing panels not looking at the camera. <laughs> this is how I catch people. <laughs> Now we see a lot of different nice, uh, we see Evelyn is not looking at the camera, but we just, we, I know she will and she is possible. Look at the camera and then feel the vibe and speak for at least two to three minutes and keep on practicing until you get used to it. Now this is whereby the body language monitor will actually help you to improve on your eye contact, your gestures online. Now do you think that that's actually a valuable idea to add this role? If you do, you can actually type in chat, uh, say, I'm going to use it next time. Set an action plan. If you want to have this role, try it out. Maybe that will actually improve the, everything, the vibe of the whole meeting. So if you want to use it, think about adding the body language point. There's only one. Now, the second one is very obvious, is you need to know someone that's always playing a nice guitar or musician. Uh, what I mean by that is that at this moment whereby someone actually spoke something wrongly and some, git some musician uh, will actually play a aww, aww, that kind of sound and then you actually can actually make it better <laughs> by making sure that you can be nice and interactive like, like those kind of sound effects obviously this is what the musician will do 
Okay, the musician will actually add some vibe into the whole meeting. So it's like if I'm speaking something wrongly and then the musician will actually make the whole vibe interesting, okay? So this musician can be anyone who knows how to play piano, guitar, et cetera, but it's still fine. You can download applications online or even like on your phone, play some laughter music and stuff. Uh, this is what I do. I'm trying to find the one that I usually do, but uh, don't laugh. Don't laugh, I highlight. Okay, so this is what happens when I want to do a back, background sound, okay? So let's, let me feature Sarah for a bit because uh, this is usually what I do is like other people speaking at, at these sounds. So, so now everyone can actually feel a bit of what I'm going to do. Right? This is actually called the musician role. So this musician role uh, actually add a spice. Uh, if your club love this kind of roles, then go for it. This is actually rec uh, my recommendation, my personal favorite, because you can, if the whole club are playful, if the whole club members are like, everyone can play, uh, when I say play meaning that they don't feel offended, then this is actually a way whereby you can stimulate the whole vibe up to the next level. Adding this kind of sound effects, uh, adding this nice vibe, little vibe there, you can try it. If you'd like to try that, type in the chat box. I say, I will try it next time. So you can actually become making sure that it's exercise. So it's up to you. I'm just giving you some examples. You also can play like the, the kind of like, oh no, the, the kind of like you, you make a mistake and then they actually sound effect and stuff. You can actually do that. Now this is called the musician room. Now next one is what I usually like. It's called the theme. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? The theme master. So this theme master is not just designing the theme. We set the theme that everyone wear hats today. Everyone wear makeup today. Uh, everyone dress smart casual today. So this theme master will actually give an additional element that everyone who wants to get involved, we will have the best costume award. So let's say, for example, let me try to find any costume that I have, but oh, I think I throw it away. So I have a... Uh, Halloween werewolf costume and I would just like if they are playing like Halloween theme and I have to wear that and I become like the, those little red riding hood that wolf there just to add a little bit interesting elements in play so there's also like the best costume like who wears the best costume in the whole meeting like imagine yourself wearing the costume in in your whole house and your family members are looking at you and say what are you doing <laughs> like you, you get them involved like oh, i'm actually having an online meeting right now would you like to join me wear a costume okay get the whole family involved and you can actually have fun now this is whereby i want to see how many people will like to add this idea in there if you like it and you want to use it type it in the chat box say next time i'm going to try it make it as an action plan now these are the ideas whereby i think is can make the whole meeting interesting so don't don't sabotage me. I'm doing a, when I'm doing international speech. Okay, it's it's not really that great to do a costume online when you <laughs> you're risking all your factors to not to get disconnected. Okay, there's a typical element whereby most of the clubs bind. I want to say most of the clubs. Uh, some clubs in particular love to feature this kind of role called joke master, because most of us who are working like me, I'm working every day very late. <sighs> I'm very tired. I I feel exhausted. I still have to go to a Toastmasters. I still have to go for training of my own personal time. <sighs> and now I hear a new joke. And I feel so... Wow! <laughs> That's so cool! And then this kind of like, you get the whole energy level back. Okay, this is called self-improvisation. Don't call me crazy, okay? But the thing is, I'm just saying that having a joke master will lighten the everything up. You bring the vibe back in place. Okay, so joke master actually talk about a uh, like joking and actually train people to talk humorously. Okay, so these are the elements in play, so that will be helpful for you. If you like to add the joke master, always give joke at the start of the meeting. Go for it. Okay, give a thumbs up if you like to use that, or you can say, I'm going to try next time. Show us that part. Thank you. Some people have it, so if you have it, good job. If you like it, good job. And then if you want to use it, good job. I cannot think about another sentence of that. <laughs>
Now, there's also something called the chat monitor. So chat monitor is one by one person actually talks in the chat box and keep the whole meeting ongoing, like answering questions, like how do you do, where are you from? Oh, I have been to Australia, I've been to France and I, I love the Alpha Tower, the kind of that conversation stuff. So this person is like, we call it the typo maniac. So this person is actually just typing there and making sure that everyone is actually in there. Like, let's have more chats. Let's have more evaluation. Let's have more conversation, shall we? And type, 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 type. So this person is actually a type. Some people hate chats. I, I assure you. Like, I don't want people talking in my workshop. Like, don't type. That's used for timing. So people who actually have a conflict of interest. So it's up to you. The chat monitor actually facilitates the whole operation of answering questions and making the audience feel that I'm part of this meeting. That's the most important role of a chat monitor. Not just looking at the chats only, but also highlighting the good phrases or maybe like uh, some highlights. Like, I, I, I noticed that someone is from Africa today and Africa, wow, I, I've never been there. Like, could you actually let us, and I want, we want to feature you today. We have a hear from you. Can you let us know more about uh, places in Africa where you have been and share your stories? The chat monitor observe the tiniest details too. So if you love to have a chat monitor in an online meeting, you can give me a thumbs up or at least type. Yeah, we have noticed panels being a typo or maniac. Uh, this is the only joke, but don't worry, don't take it too seriously. Uh, but this part is whereby we want to make sure that the whole flow is in place. Okay, so the chat monitor, if you like it, next time assign a role, okay, that will focus on this part. Every time, every time you have a new try, record that experience and whether saying that you like it or not. If you like it, why? If you don't like it, how can it be improved? How can it be refined? Remember the method of now and refined? Always think about new ideas to make sure that your roles and your online skill can improve. That is there a way that I can stop, stop my storytelling but start my humor speech? You can think about how to refine your speaking skills better. Now next. Chat monitor is okay. Next is the Hackle Master. Anyone who know about Hackle Master? No, I don't know. Some people might know, but have you been hackled before? Okay, what do you mean by hackle? Is that now let's say for example I'm speaking. Okay, I'm speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. Someone just say, say, Aaron, can you can you stop looking left and right? And someone would disrupt you. Okay, this is called pleasant disruption. But I said pleasant, meaning that you try to add some fun, like Aaron, uh, you, you don't look handsome. You can't attract girls. That kind of thing whereby you hackle into it and try to make the whole speech up to a next level of humor. This is what the hackle master do. But like if you imagine that if everyone knows the rules for this meeting, like everyone keep quiet, only speak when you want to speak, then hackle master will realize its full potential. What in my full potential is that you have this person that's actually trying to hackle in a light way because like I can know I know like Sarah, I know like Angela, I can I know like uh, Sandy now, I know Alicia. For example, I can joke with Alicia and saying that, look, Alicia, uh, you're always wearing the same tops today. Why are you speaking like that again? Like we can actually interrupt and making sure that we let people know more about the speaker in a different way. Hey, why come you haven't showered? Like, well, how come your hair is messy? And, 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 and this kind of things actually helps to keep the speaker focused on the speech and also let people have a good laugh. So the Hackle Master can be good in a way. It must be trained. I will say you need to practice and practice and practice, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse before you try this method. Because this uh, Hackle Master can be devastating if that person is like, taking the wrong way around. So if you like Hackle Master, you can actually type in the chat box. I'm going to try next time. Not just making jokes, but also making pleasant interruption. Wait, Aaron, stop. There's a mouse in your house. For example, this can be pleasant if you want to give a nice interruption. But uh, I'm just saying it's not just making jokes. It can be other things that is going into that, going into that conversation that makes it more interesting. Special way, no. If you don't like it, don't worry. This is only just recommendation. Some clubs love hackles. I, I can, there are like 12 clubs around the world that is hackle-based. Okay, hackle-based. They only focus on hackling. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good hairdresser. I don't have a good one. <laughs> so 
Uh, next one is a role that I really, 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 really like. Uh, this is called a question master. So its role is functioning as giving questions at the end of the meeting. So what's so special about question master? Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate in full line of how question master do. So for question master, for those of you who know this role is actually after the general evaluator. So this role is actually placed after the general evaluator and the question master will ask something like this. Now, now my turn as a question master will test you on whether you're observant in the whole meeting. So I'll ask simple questions that say, say, for example, how many times does Angela show her face on the screen? Not half the face, not like this, but full face. Now there will be answers and you will give the right answers. Like how many times does uh, Manish switch off his webcam and open his webcam again? Oh, those are the questions that happens in the meeting. Oh, who laughed the most in this meeting? Who had the crackiest mouth? Oh, who, how many people wear specs in this meeting? Simple to answer. These are the question master that test your observation skills. How many, how many of you noticed that there's one member in the crowd that has a tooth that's off his, his face. Like basically there's a missing tooth. So you can actually pick up all this kind of nice observation skills that makes everyone think, wow, I didn't notice that. You noticed that, okay, I know something new today. So question master is the one that's like jotting down notes. Like how many, how many times does Aaron say Aaron? So this is like boring question, but yeah, this is also testing the question now. So question master always asks this elements in place. We call that as a, 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 a grand observer. So he observes the whole meeting even more precise than the general evaluator. So if you like this idea or like this role, which I personally is my favorite, you can actually type into the chat box saying, next time I want to think about adding the question master into that role. Adding these new elements will make the whole meeting interesting and also can be professional too. Next. Yeah, it's also called a quiz master for some, some countries. Now next is the formats. Uh, some other formats that you think about that can be interesting too. Uh, be something called the mysterious box challenge. Uh, what do you mean by mysterious box? Is that, uh, okay, this is a mysterious box challenge whereby, how will I do so? So I, everyone who actually being actively participating in a meeting will receive a mysterious box. This mysterious box will have a function card. Okay, this is called a function card. See that on the right-hand side? You have a card that shows your privilege, your power or, or, or over the meeting. This mysterious box challenge is actually like, if you answer it, then you have this ability to either become a question master or like, telling you that if you are being a chat monitor, please make sure that you say, I am awesome, I'm handsome in the, in the chat box three times. That will be like a, there will be a dare question too. So this mysterious box will actually give the whole elements that everyone has a mission in the whole meeting. And then do not let that mission be reviewed. So let's say for example, I'm being, uh, I, have to, I have to praise uh, Angela five times in the meeting. For example, my card, my special power, I have to praise Angela five times. And then I have to do it discreetly so that people would not guess my intention. People who ever guess your card, you will have to be pranked. So let's say for example, oh, Angela, I, I love your smile today. It's really awesome. Just a praise. And then I have to highlight the praise and continue. But next one, blah, 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 blah. After which, uh, Angela, wow, great background on your, on your books. You are a book worm, right? I, I, I love those books at the background. So praise number two. Make sure that you've gone undiscreetly. And then if Angela suspects something like, uh, Aaron, I want to guess that your car is praising me five times. If I'm being guessed correctly, I have to suffer a prank. And the prank is unanimous. So it's like basically everyone votes on it and you'll be pranked at after the meeting. So this is like the mysterious box challenge. So you can actually add, oh yeah. Uh, you know that in chat box itself, uh, you know that you can share files. Do you know that you can share pictures? If you update the most latest version, you can share pictures. You can share it privately too. You can share this cards or basically you can, 
uh, get that context and then this is your mission for today. And then this is called the mysterious box challenge. Now everyone has a mission and everyone will actually try to evade people from guessing your challenge. And if you successfully win, you can decide who to prank. So we, we another term called prank master. Uh, they don't pan it because you're revealing the card to everyone, <laughs> okay? So this is one way where we can actually add some elements in play. Now, this one is actually testing our power of persuasion or power of uh, communication, whereby we communicate in discrete. Now you see how that goes, right? This is also training our communication skills in a different way. Now, if you like this idea, you can put it into place and say, look, I'm going to try this next time for my theme meeting. Because formats are harder to implement, the role takers are easier. Formats, it decides to, uh, formats are, uh, you need to talk with your whole community or the, at least the whole members, they need to know how it plays before you can implement into your meeting. You need to make sure that everyone knows the rules of the game. It's just like if you're going for international speech contest, okay, international speech contest, and literally Spain, you do not know how uh, the international speech contest works, then literally speaking that you do not know how to play and you lose the game. Simple, do you understand? That's how we actually talk about uh, features. Now, next. Now, the next thing is the mysterious guest challenge. Uh, what's the difference between mysterious box and mysterious guest is that, uh, let's say for example, you can imagine that I, let's say if I invite Dana Jaya or if I invite uh, some world champion speakers or some people that they may have known for a long time and I ask them for one mission, very simple, switch over your webcam and rename yourself, okay? And then we'll leave yourself as question mark. So my name will be like this. Uh, let me just rename myself for a bit. Just to do a live demonstration. So can you see the question mark on my screen? So like for example, I would say that today, we have two mysterious guests into our meeting. Now in this mysterious guest, if you guess correctly, this person will give you an awesome evaluation for your speech. And then people, would you like to guess if you are a speaker? If you guess correctly, let me give you one hint. This is a world champion public speaker. Oh no, this one is from District 89. Uh, this one is an area director before. So you can keep on giving them guess. Okay, and after which, if you, they guess correctly, ta-da, that's me. Okay, so this is just an example of what you can do online because they do not know your identity, okay? So if you like this mysterious, because it actually gives you a vibe that is like surprises within surprises. Imagine that you're treating, uh, you have a, you have, uh, someone that you fancy in a club and you want to give a mysterious gift like uh, giving them like would you like to go out with me like a movie ticket for example this mysteriousness uh, arouse curiosity this actually is the same feeling that you want to get the whole club involved in guessing and being part of the fun so this is, thank you very much panels but the thing is that uh, this is whereby uh, this elements can work in some clubs okay so for me uh, sometimes I actually invite the world champion speaker over or even invite uh, uh, a, a famous pop star and then hide in our chat room. And then after which I would say, today we have a special guest for today. And this special guest is hidden within our crowd. With a question mark sign. Now I'm going to give you three little hints of who this person is. And if you guess correctly, you have a personal movie ticket from me. And this person will help the whole meeting up together. So this is how we do for online. Everyone clear on this part, on how to play this game? This is a game in some way, okay? But it makes it more interesting. Now, you also can think about debates uh, online. Uh, you can actually debate uh, with the power of breakout rooms. Uh, for those of you who do not know what breakout rooms are, uh, they are like separate rooms within this room. And you divide the contestant like debates like four debaters in each room and let them discuss on the motion. Motion for uh, coronavirus is the key uh, to success, for example, which is not really true. But the thing is that the debates has to be contentious. Uh, has to be something like uh, we should use plastic bags or we shouldn't use plastic bags. And then divide them into breakout rooms and let them have the fun, which is taking the time for table topics. Now, 
for those of you who love debate, you will find this idea really very nice because Tailsmasters table topics, it doesn't feature on debates. And if you add the debate element into table topics online, they'll be much more interesting because it's virtually with a group of people that you might not know. And then you are trying to form a preposition to train your leadership and train your communication skills. Everyone clear so far on that part on debates? Simple, simple and effective. Now, not just debates, we also have the pair up whereby uh, this is called, uh, this is actually, uh, I actually refined it to uh, break up room, but it's actually not, it's called break out room. Okay, break out room. So breakout rooms is whereby we actually have a pair exercise whereby I will pair up with each of you with one partner. And you have to practice on the skills that I've just delivered if I've talked about uh, eye contact to look at the screen. So you practice looking each other in the eye in each separate breakout rooms. It's like kind of a speed dating in another way. That you, 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 if you're two guys, that is also still have a speed dating to know each other well. Yeah, okay. So the thing is that uh, if you actually do this way, you actually can bond together better and then let them have exercise to do. So, or you can group of four and then let each other practice like talk about a story and chain effect that will actually speed up the efficiency and practice what you've learned so breakout rooms actually involve small groups whereby people can bond together you remember online do not allow too much bonding we give them the opportunity to bond more okay everyone clear on that part okay thank you we still have people dropping out so i'm, I'm thinking i'm boring people out now, uh, there's also something called the talent performance. For those of you who know this character, uh, is a very popular uh, actress uh, in our in Hong Kong. Uh, it's called Zai Gayin, but then I just spoke Cantonese, but it's actually a very popular uh, actress. And also, uh, I would say MC as well. Uh, she's well-versed in everything. Now, what do you mean by talent performance? Talent performance, it means that there will be a group of judges from the members, okay? And everyone will show a talent out. So during the table topic session itself, we will actually show like two minutes to show and display your talent. Like we can play guitar, we can uh, do beatboxing, we can uh, uh, do all those complicated hands, uh, which I can't do. Uh, we can uh, show how to change our mask or how to beautify ourselves so show your talent online and then if people like it they will like give you a clap if they don't like it they will ring a bell and telling you to go off so this is like the part whereby if they don't like then like vote you can vote them or you can actually have a, like a game show you know game show type this is whereby you actually can show your talents in a way whereby you can impress the people around you in the room this is one way that we do uh for uh, online to make it more interesting uh to at some talents because we want to know what talents they have. Some people might have talents that we do not know. It is also get to know your members and helps your membership retention, if you like, if you think from the other perspective. Everyone clear on this part? Talent performance? Just very clear, simple answer. Now, uh, we also do something called the round robin online. Uh, now, most of you may not heard about this word, but let me ask you, uh, ask everyone, how many of you know about this word, round robin? I, I noticed some people. If you know round robin, basically you have experienced that. Now, round robin is like this. Now we have like 53 people in this room, right? 53, literally in this room. So it drops from 10, so it, it, it actually drops by 10%, 10 to 15% of the people participating. So now online itself, we would do a round robin whereby each of you in the square will talk about one positive point and one improvement point for us to improve the next time that we have the meeting. The more, more comments that you have, the better, right? The more positive ideas, the more improvement points. Then you can make your whole meeting interesting next time, better and more refined. So everyone is a good evaluator on his own. So having people input shows that you respect them and also appreciating them for the time in this meeting. So the round robin is actually whereby we get to have lots of different nice feedbacks. Not just, not just at the end, but round robin can be done in evaluation part, whereby you can invite everyone to evaluate on the speaker. Type in the chat box and say, uh, please, Please have a, uh, one good point about our speaker and one improvement point for our speaker. Type in the chat box, etc. So let's say if I want to do something, example, say, so far you have experienced one and a half hour of my time of my workshop. 
So how do you find the workshop so far? Give me one good point and also one improvement point in the chat box now, if you can. I give everyone like 20 seconds to 30 seconds to type. This is called the round robin effect. One good point and one improvement point. If you don't think of, if you can't think about improvement point, don't worry, you can say two good points, which I still like it. Okay. So let the round robin sinks in because you have more people giving you feedbacks that will be even better than just one evaluator. Imagine that 53 people are world-class speakers or great, nice, awesome observers, and they give you this feedbacks for your own good. They don't have anything to gain. They won't want to improve, help you improve. So you get 53 different feedbacks and you can know which one will really help you on that. Go on one photo, one concept, uh, informative humor. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, but then I still have 10, 10 people dropping out of the meeting. So I didn't impress the 10 people. I cared. So please bring me back those 10 people. For me, I actually have another additional prop. For those of you who praise me, I will give you this. This is my typical smile. Okay. Thank you very much. Can be more interactive. I, I would definitely love that too. Now this is like the round robin whereby we, uh, well, I will late, later on look at more information. Round robin wise, you can do it anywhere. Round robin is involving every single one. That's called a round robin. Now I'm gonna give you guys a practice on your creativity. You heard about these ideas so far. You have this so many amazing ideas right now. Now I want you to come up with one original idea that I haven't talked about. I purposely left that out. I can come up with 50 to 70 ideas just at a click of a finger. But the thing is, I want you guys to think about one original idea which will be helpful to your club meetings. Uh, don't bring the toilet roll or so the toilet break. That will actually affect everything. <laughs> Thank you very much on that part. But yeah, um, think about one original idea that may help your meetings to elevate to the next level. Now I'm going to divide everyone now with 52 people into different breakout rooms, randomly, automatically, into six different rooms, okay? And then you have a chat. It's randomized. You have this eight people to come up with a nice, amazing idea and you will do a little presentation at the end. And this presentation will go viral because I will be putting it on YouTube. Okay, everyone simple, clear? You can come up with something unique that I may have not thought about and I will take that well, credits to one of the participants in the meeting. Okay, that will be actually very helpful. I'm gonna divide it into seven rooms whereby on average there'll be six to seven people and you have fun. Now, everyone, Voila, so now you should see a breakout room that's popping up. And join your room and then meet your new friends, okay? Don't worry, I'll pop into different rooms and see how it goes, okay? Just click on the button, say join meeting room and then you actually visit others. For those of you who do not know what breakout rooms are, uh, it's actually on your bottom right-hand corner, there are little squares, four little squares, click on it, and you'll be assigned to a room already, okay? For those of you who are using mobile phone, it's on your top left-hand corner, there will be a room available when you click on it, and then you can go to elsewhere. For those of you who are here, Basically, you are either AFK <laughs> or Si Hui. Thank you, Kelvin. Uh, thank you very much for coming by. I'll go to different breakout rooms and see how it goes.
Hello， 诗慧。Are you there， 诗慧？嗯嗯。Oh, start visiting clubs or groups. Thank you very much for staying behind here. Actually, actually, you know, I mean, I like the session with Adrian said, but I was expecting a Q and A because I have questions in my mind, so I'm not very focused right now because I wanted to ask him questions. And you know, it's already past ten thirty. It's going to be ten thirty now. So the, I mean, don't worry, there will be a moment whereby you can ask questions. Don't worry. I'm going to drop off now. I'm sorry, I have to drop off already because it's getting late. No, you can private message me. I can answer your questions as well. Sorry about that, though. No, actually, I wanted to ask in person so everybody can hear and everybody can, can learn, right? I, I, I like you. I never like chat. I, I detest chat because I think already we are already no longer interaction. We are already like far of interaction. I actually wanted to chat so that people can, you know, hear where you're coming from, you know. Mm, people can true. improve their safety, right? Because, you know, seriously, Aaron, I think I like what you have. You're a very great, interesting idea and you are great, you're very clear. But my question, I have questions. So I was thinking that actually the timing, you should have a little bit of time, like maybe ten minutes, for people to ask questions. People can learn from the questions. You see. Actually, my FAQ is actually after this. Yeah, I know, but it's getting. It's already. Yeah, I know. Time yeah, is well over time. To 10. Yeah, Toastmaster is always start on, on time, time, end on time. That's yep, right. agree. <laughs> you are already behind time. And I'm afraid I have to drop. So unless you have an email, you have an email. Oh, uh, I can give you an email here. So don't worry. I'll